What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and I'm back from my break, raring to go and I thought the first thing I'd do is talk a little bit more about the vehicle that was in the background of the channel update I released just before I went away. So for those of you who didn't see that video, there was a rover type craft in the background that was loosely based off the Mars Curiosity rover, which uses a specific suspension setup called a rocker bogey suspension setup. And what I wanted to do was see whether or not that sort of translated into Space Engineers in a way that worked and I've been pretty pleased with the results. Let me dive in and show you what is kind of a version 2 of that now. It's had some changes since the version that was in that video. And the first change I made was making sure that it can be accessed from on the ground without a jetpack. So, as you can see, it nicely holds itself in position, ready for boarding down below. And then when you do get in, you can unlock and let the entire thing move itself back round. It's kind of balanced, so it sits nice and level, nice and horizontal in there. Now this is set up at the moment in a world that has natural gravity on, and this is because I've been trying to sort of model what it's going to be like when we do actually get on planets and everything is being affected by gravity on every block. But at the same time, this does work without natural gravity as well, so if you just peek underneath you can see there's a whole bunch of mass blocks. They're important to keep us nice and stable and level, but they're also meaning that it will work in standard modes without NG as well. But enough of that, let's jump onto the control bar and go and give it a drive. So the first thing we're going to do is turn, and one of the problems with a ship like this is it's got a very long wheelbase, and this makes turning a bit of a problem, especially as we're using rotors here for ground clearance, and we do not have the ability to actually turn the wheels, so we're doing it tank track style. So one of the changes I made since the previous one, and the one that was in that video, is we now have a turning that involves lifting the inside rear wheel off the ground to reduce the wheelbase of the craft. The outside doesn't want to stay up, the rotors aren't strong enough to hold it in position but the inside one at least will stay in the air and make it slightly easier for us to turn around. I'm going to hit 9 to reset everything back to sort of standard settings and turn ourselves back the other way so that we can actually go and climb this hill in front of us. Do a bit of a demonstration. So, but there we have 7 and 8 there are the two sort of turning slash parking modes. So one of them is going to lift the middle of the craft up off the ground, which is good to give us more ground clearance if for whatever reason there's a very large obstacle we want to get out of the way but is also kind of a relic of how I initially wanted to turn the craft. And then 8 is how I am now turning the craft, which results in an even shorter wheelbase, which is lifting the rear wheels off the ground instead of lifting the middle ones off the ground. Less ground clearance, but a, a shorter wheelbase all round. But if we hit 9 to reset and just drive forward, those wheels will make their way back down to the ground again by the time we reach the hill we're going to climb. And the idea with this vehicle is it's a very sort of capable all-terrain vehicle that can be used for exploration and for cargo hauling. So you notice we've got an ore detector on here that's lighting up all under the ground, and we've got an antenna on here as well that's getting in the way of our vision currently, but could be useful in the long run. So we're going to go along towards this hill, and one of the other things that our sort of lock for the boarding of the ship can be used for is ensuring that the cockpit stays out of the way. So you see at the moment it's actually going to stay level with the ground at all times. It's balanced so that it's going to stay nice and level, which is helpful. It keeps the weight over the wheels in the right place. Should there be, however, something that's going to get in the way and cause a problem, you can tilt the cockpit backwards and lock it in position so that it stays there out of the way as well. But for now we're going to unlock that and we're just going to approach this, what I hope, hope you will agree is a pretty unpleasant hill. It's going to be tricky for most vehicles to get up there, especially at this sort of speed. But I know from experience that this is also not a problem for, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I want to call this, the rover of some sort, that's for sure, but I don't know what I want to call it. <laughs> Maybe you guys can hit me up with some name suggestions. But it's going to go nice and slowly, keeping its cockpit level, straight up the top here. Over all of this, and it doesn't matter in the slightest whether or not the wheels are encountering pretty dramatically different terrain. So you'll see here, one of those wheels is going to have to go over a ridge while the other one's in a valley. doesn't matter. It's just going to keep itself nice and level. One thing it does have a slight issue with, and you can see it a little bit there, and I think all of kind of wheeled vehicles and space engineers have this issue. See if I can turn it a bit at the same time, move ourselves inwards somewhat. Oh, I think I'm on there we go, on the wrong toolbar, is the fact that it slides sideways on slopes. Uh, the friction of the wheels, it just doesn't seem to be sufficient sideways on to prevent this from happening. So, just turn around so we don't whack into that tree, continue on forwards. So it's slightly annoying, it does mean that you tend to have to approach slopes straight on if you want to have any decent success at climbing up them. But what I want to do now is just dive our way down the hill, and as with going up, it's perfectly good at going down a hill as well. So go down here and we can go down quite quickly because we're not about to lose friction on the wheels going downwards so then we can just see the articulation of the suspension working as intended all the wheels staying on the floor really nicely giving us maximum grip at any time and then now we're down here 
let's pull us round to the other side and I can actually demonstrate it going up that cliff ridge to our right because the other feature that this style of suspension has that's slightly unusual is the ability to go up almost vertical surfaces. They don't, can't be that tall because of course that would be ridiculous, there's no way to actually go a long way up a vertical surface with a wheeled vehicle. But it's capable of handling vertical surfaces up to about one and a half times the height of its wheels by lifting one of them over it at a time. So hopefully I can demonstrate on this kind of nasty ridge line here. It's exactly the sort of ridge I'm talking about where you've got something that's vertical but it's only vertical for a short height. So let's go and give this a try. My usual standard of trying tests live that are bound to go wrong. Stop and spin us around. Again, the uh, short and wheelbase thing does help, but I do th I do need to try and find still a better solution for the steering as well. So that's, an that's another thing. If anyone has any clever thoughts for how to improve the steering on this, short of just making the wheels turn, I'd be very interested to hear them. But let's give this a go. And there's even, you know, that's, that's pretty much vertical in places, and it's going to be kind of tricky for any vehicle to go up slowly. But again, that rocker bogey suspension is perfect for this sort of thing. So the front wheels are going to lift themselves over and each wheel in turn is being pushed and pulled by the other sets. Really easy to the point where it will even go over these train tracks. Hopefully I can switch to some pre-recorded footage of it doing so. But it will even go over the vertical surface up to a single large block high. Which I think is a, a really nice feature. So let's spin this thing around so it misses the trees hopefully. And I'm going to leave it riding. Uh, while I go out and talk a little bit about how to put this suspension together. Because I will of course put this up on the workshop like I normally do. But there are certain features of the suspension that are really important. And without those features it just doesn't work like it's supposed to. So, so everyone understands how to do one for themselves. I'm just going to steer away from this tree again. And set her moving. Doesn't look like we've got anything in the way. Nope, we're good. Probably a bit faster than we need. And I'll jump out and turn on my jetpack. So, the bits that are important on this are all to do with the rotor positions. So this rotor here, it's very important that it's this far down this rear beam. You can change the scale of this beam here, but you can quite clearly see it's closer to one end than the other by a long distance. It's much closer to the middle, and that's an important factor on the rear. The other important factor is that the front hinge point here is higher than the rear one. What that means is it's forcing these middle wheels and the rear wheels down onto the ground, stopping them from having a reason to suddenly fling themselves into the air. Aside from that, that's kind of the main gist of things. You can, this sort of little kink I've got in it here, that is not particularly important, it just looked nice. And as we can hopefully see here, this is probably going to bash the rear end because I'm not in it. This would be a prime opportunity for that lock I was talking about. But it is even capable of making its way down pretty much vertical surfaces and you know, a little bit of a bounce at the bottom would have been better if I'd been controlling it, but seems to be fine to me. Aside from that, the only other important thing you need to do when building something like this is the balance. As I said, even without the natural gravity, balancing this central section so that these rotors, which are off, can move freely is very, very important. If you didn't have that, the central section would be moving around with the arms, bashing itself up and down all over the place. So anyway guys, I hope you like this idea. It's a concept. I'd like to see what sort of vehicles perhaps people could apply it to, because right now this vehicle, I'll admit, doesn't have the most purpose in the world, but I still think it was a nice proof of concept for that rocky buggy suspension that comes off the uh, Mars Rover. And I had quite a lot of fun driving it around, so don't forget, it's going to go up on the workshop. Link will be down below in the video description. And otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe, really helps me and the channel out. And I will catch you next time.